Good evening and welcome to the American University Museum at the Katzen Art Center um, for this exhibition by Mikal Hyman on the third floor called Radical Link, A New Community of Women, 1855 to 2020. I hope you've had a chance to see it because we'll get to have a conversation now um, about a show first proposed by Sarah Gordon, what, two years ago? Maybe longer? Yeah. Uh, she is an adjunct faculty member, Department of Art, uh, in the Art History Program. We had worked together before on an exhibition of photography, uh, photo works, presence of place, and I had confidence she could work on this very complicated exhibition with an artist 6,000 miles away in Tel Aviv. Uh, we have more projects we're working, we're thinking of working on in the future, but she has her hands full now as she is the new curator of the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. God bless you. I'm going to ask Sarah to introduce the artist, Mikal Hyman, and begin a conversation about her exceptionally moving installation on the third floor. We hope to have some discussion at the end of their presentation. So Sarah, please take it away. Well, let me, I, I, I think I'll say a few words up here and then I'm going to sit down and talk with Michal and you will also have a chance to talk with Michal. Um, but before I introduce Michal, um, I want to say thank you so much for being here tonight for this preview of all of these amazing exhibitions, um, including Radical Link, which is on the third floor, as Jack said. Um, I do want to say a few thank yous before we start because a lot of people have been involved with this exhibition from its inception. Um, here in Washington, D.C., we owe a great debt of gratitude to the Annette M. and Theodore N. Lerner Family Foundation, um, with special thanks to Annette Lerner and Marla Lerner Tannenbaum. Um, also, the Lodestar Fund of the Greater Washington Community Foundation, otherwise known as Betsy Carell, who I don't think I see here, but may be here at some point tonight. Um, also, thanks to the Outset Contemporary Art Fund and the Artist Grant Program. These are both foundations that um, support Israeli artists who are exhibiting outside of Israel. And I want to acknowledge, too, the collaboration that we've had with um, American University's Center for Israel Studies. Um, Michael Brenner and Laura Cutler have organized, in conjunction with this exhibition, a conference on refugees and asylum seekers in Israel. This is taking place this Sunday and Monday here at American University. In Tel Aviv, um, the exhibition has received support from Raw Art Gallery, from OFEC Art, and the Ostrovsky Family Fund. Um, also, tremendous thanks go to designer Michael Gordon in Tel Aviv for his incredible work on the book that accompanies the exhibition, um, and Decure in Brussels for printing the book. Many people here at American University have put many hours into this exhibition, um, and I thank wholeheartedly the staff here who's worked incredibly hard, um, and special gratitude to Jack Rasmussen, who was game to take on this fairly complicated project. Um, and who I appreciate for his willingness to push boundaries with his exhibitions um, and his tendency to lead with yes. He may not always end with yes, but he leads with yes, so thank you. Um, I want to say a few words about the collaboration between Michal and myself because I think it gives a little insight into both of our commitment to our projects and to this project together. Um, in 2015, as I was preparing to publish my book on Edward Moybridge's animal locomotion photographs, I came across Michal's 20, uh, 2002 work that she produced as part of her Photographer Unknown archive um, in response to one of Moybridge's 1884 photographs. It was a picture, it was a serial photograph of a naked woman spanking a naked child. Um, needless to say, there was much to be said about this picture. Um, and Scholar and curator Ariella Azule had, had written about it in her very important book, The Civil Contract of Photography, um, but I wanted to say more. So I contacted Michal out of the blue um, to ask permission to reproduce and discuss her work in my forthcoming book, and she granted it enthusiastically. About a year later, I heard from Michal again um, when she contact me, contacted me about her project which at the time was called, I think, Return Asylum, um, but has developed into Radical Link. 
Um, she was writing long descriptive emails and I was responding with lots of questions. Um, and together we started to formulate an exhibition proposal. In the spring of 2017, Michal insisted that I should fly to Tel Aviv to see her exhibition um, in Herzliya, which is just outside of Tel Aviv. I contacted Jack about this show, and he expressed some initial interest, um, and I flew to Tel Aviv, and we had an amazing several days together. Um, and since then, Michal and I have been in what feels like constant communication about funding, about gallery layouts, about essays, um, but most importantly about her project. Um, so I want to start by kind of introducing um, sort of the background of Michal's work. She's been producing photographs, archives, and interactive performances since 1984, and films since 2001. Um, some of her largest projects include the Photographer Unknown Archive, the Michal Hyman Tests, um, some of which you can see upstairs, and her series of self-portraits, I Was There. Throughout her career, she has imported diagnostic and psychoanalytic methods into her artistic endeavors. Her work has been exhibited throughout Israel since 1984, and also in Australia, Germany, Japan, the Netherlands, Austria, and China. Michal was the first recipient of the Spielmann International Prize for Excellence in Photography at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem in 2010. We happen to have the second winner of that prize here with us tonight, um, John Jacob. Michal currently teaches at Jerusalem's Bezalel Academy of Arts and Design, and she's a member of the Tel Aviv Institute for Contemporary Psychoanalysis. Believe it or not, Radical Link is her first US museum show. Um, it's about time, right? Um, so this project that you can see and experience upstairs is the culmination of seven years of searching, discovery, and analysis. Um, in 2012, while Michal was undertaking research for a previous project, she encountered um, historian Sander Gilman's 1976 book, The Face of Madness, Hugh W. Diamond and the Origin of Psychiatric Photography. And I'm very uh, glad to say that Professor Gilman is here with us tonight as well. In the book, Michal was struck by plate 34, um, taken by Diamond in 1855, in which she recognized a younger version of herself. Um, it was like looking into a mirror warped only by time. This began a remarkable personal and artistic journey. Uh, Michal began examining her connection with Plate 34 through her artistic process, researching 19th century asylums and exploring their archives. In 2017, five years after recognizing herself in Plate 34, Michal visited the San Servolo Asylum in Venice. While viewing its collection of more than 13,000 photographic plates documenting the institution and, and its residents, she encountered her own gaze in that of Maria Domenica Delberto, who occupied the asylum in the 1880s. So upon recognizing herself in Diamond's Plate 34, Michal had begun, to, um, had begun a quest to return to, or as she says, to infiltrate the 19th century asylum. She began by producing a version of the checkered dress worn by women in the Surrey County Asylum. She photographed and filmed about 150 individuals, including herself, wearing the dress. And these include family members, artists, human rights activists and attorneys, migrant workers, writers, professors of law and history, asylum seekers, Knesset members, psychoanalysts, an Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, doctors, security guards, poets, curators. Um, most of these individuals are women, but about 30 of them are men, and some of them identify as gender fluid. And they hail from such places as Israel, Palestine, Philippines, Sudan, Colombia, India, Eritrea, Russia, England, and the Netherlands. Michal intends for these individuals to accompany her on her journey back to the asylum and you will see 40 of them upstairs in the exhibition. You will also see, or you may have already seen, <clears throat> on the small screens on the tables upstairs, um, some of the conversations that took place between Michal and her photographic subjects in the studio. Michal also photographs subjects intended to serve as her own guards while she and her companions infiltrate the 19th century asylum. There are two light boxes in the exhibition, which I hope you won't miss because they're placed on the ends of walls um, near either entrance to the exhibition. 
One of them is a portrait of Leonid Pekarovsky. Um, he was an art curator in his native Moscow. And upon immigrating to Israel in 1991, he took jobs such as digging graves and guarding parking lots in order to support himself. While maintaining these jobs, he has risen to prominence as a writer. The other guard, and these guards are um, featured in light boxes. Um, the other one is a photograph of Nereldin Musa, a Sudanese immigrant fluent in six languages who never technically received refugee status in Israel. He lived in Israel for six years, um, and then in 2014, he was interned at Holat, which is a detention center for asylum seekers. He was held there for 19 months, um, and then returned to Tel Aviv, and later obtained a visa to Canada. In addition to photographing these individuals with whom she wants to re-enter the asylum, Michal traveled to London and to Venice, um, both to research the asylums and also to make films. So the results are three films that are shown in the galleries upstairs. Um, one is Plate 34 Line, London, in which Michal's daughter Emily wears the checkered dress and travels by train and by foot through London to the Springfield University Hospital, which was formerly the Surrey County Asylum. Um, the second film is Double Check, which shows a guided tour of the interior and grounds of the Springfield University Hospital. And then the third one is Female Infiltrators Venice, um, in which Michal and Emily ride gondolas and vaporettos and walk through Venice to the San Servolo Asylum. <clears throat> and finally, if you come back um, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, um, you will see Michal wearing the checkered dress herself, inhabiting the space and, um, in, and speaking with visitors. And it's a very unique opportunity to have a quite intimate um, discussion about the exhibition. Um, some of these conversations that she's had in the past um, at Herzliya are also um, featured in some of the small screens that you'll see upstairs. <clears throat> Let's see. So I just want to briefly again mention the catalog, the book that goes along with the exhibition. Um, it's a fully illustrated book um, that reproduces over 80 of Michal's photographs as well as archival uh, materials. There are essays. Um, one is by Sharon Slowinski, who's professor um, of information and media studies at the University of Western Ontario. Um, there's another essay by Orna Ben Naftali, who is rector of the College of Management um, Academic Studies at the Coleman, and also Emil Zola, chair for human rights at the Strict School of Law. Um, and Orna Ben Naftali's portrait is also featured um, upstairs. There's also an essay by myself and writings by Michal in the catalog, so I hope you'll take a look there out, out there in the shop. So I want to introduce Michal Hyman. <laughs> so, is this on? Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. And very thankful. Uh, as Sarah said, it's my first uh, solo exhibition uh, in museum in the state. And I um, want to say that I'm so thankful, you, Sarah, Jack, and all the stuff we've done. A whole lot of work this week, all of us together. Uh, it's quite a complicated exhibition with all the technician things and the many layers. And uh, I hope later you'll see it and come back again and see the exhibition. One more thing. I'm so um, touched and excited that Professor Sandra Gilman is here with his wife, Marina. If not him, I wouldn't have encountered this place 34, and I wouldn't have started all this adventure. And if you'll have later, you'll will to, to say something, I'll be very happy. We were, oh gosh. <laughs> we were hoping this would be a conversation with Michal. Um, I have a few questions for her. We've been in conversation for quite a long time, though. So if you have questions, I would love for you to be able to um, talk with Michal as well. 
Um, I mean, I'll just start by asking you. I have to say that uh, Sarah asked me if I want to hear the question, and I said no. She has no idea what I'm about to ask her. <laughs> I think the first question, and be, partly because this was sort of the inception of the project, is what does it mean for you to have recognized yourself in these photographs that were taken in the 1850s and the 1880s? Um, everyone has... Uh, photographs of other people that he encountered in the past, uh, in newspapers, in photo albums, in relatives, whatever. So I have many like that. But such an encounter I never had. I screamed when I looked at it. My singular hands, something in the, the posture, something in more deep something so deep. The reason why uh, I encountered this photograph is because uh, in 2000 and 20, 2010, uh, I won a prize, the Spielmann Prize. Uh, it was about uh, psychoanalysis in arts, photography, and every book, I, I went into the, uh, the internet and every book that had uh, psychiatry, art, photography, whatever, uh, I, I, I ordered everything. And there was one book that came up and on the cover there was a woman holding a, a dead bird. I looked at this photograph on the cover just in the internet and I felt it was a pigeon, right? And I felt that this is a, a unique photograph, not, it's got a compassion into it, it's got something else in this photograph uh, that I'd never encountered uh, in photographs uh, in the 19th century. Uh, so I ordered this book and I looked at it. And this, uh, this book and this uh, uh, plate is, is, is an important part in this exhibition. And I looked at, uh, at the book and I started, and then I encountered plate 34. And that was it. Now, as an artist, you work a lot. But sometimes there is something that happens to you. And it's already seven years that I'm into something because of this, uh, this encounter and this meeting. This is how deep it is. It's, um, how can I say it? It, it's, it? it made me think, it made me think of what it means to return to yourself. Am I allowed to return to myself? What it means to return to another era when women, where a woman has no rights, neither on their bodies, not on their property, not on their children, and not even about, they can't uh, have a hearing. They are not uh, entitled to go to court or say, no, I didn't do that, I didn't. So this was, uh, a lot of questions came up. Uh, if I want to go back to myself, so uh, how I'm doing it? And then I said, I can't go on my own. I made myself the dress and I was willing to penetrate uh, in the 19th century through photography. Can photography do that? Can something that you feel so similar to, can, 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 do, can this encounter do something? I didn't know, but I knew that I cannot go on my own. And I have to build a community that will go with me. So now what the community is? Whom I'm going to take, whom I'm not going to take. So, so many questions uh, arose by, from this meeting, and that's what made me this encounter. You just started to talk about the idea of return, return to yourself, and other types mm -hmm. of return, and we've had some conversations about this word over the years. I yes. mean, um, you used it quite a lot. I yes. think when we first started working together, and then you told me recently you didn't want to use it anymore. What is what is the what are the connotations of that word return for you? The return of the suppressed, the return of uh, the right to return in Israel with the Palestinians. It's a big issue with people that want to return to their places and they can't. 
I mean, the whole world is now about not being able to return, not people to themselves and not people to the places they've been. Everything is so fluid and everything is so... Uh, the word return is also private, but also it's a, it's a big uh, word for everyone here. And uh, when, when I started to want to return um, to, to myself, uh, questions about return became more uh, difficult. If I had something like, why don't they let people return, what it means to return, and what is the right to return, through thinking uh, of this portrait, uh, the layers were more complicated. Does anyone want to jump in with questions? I could keep going, but... Mm -hmm. um, I have a question about why Pekarski and Musa... Oh, question about why Pekarski and Musa were important to you mm -hmm. and how you happened to meet them. Okay, that's... Okay, I'll start with um, uh, Pekarski. Israel is a place where many people coming from, from different countries. Every uh, 10 years, they're coming from different places. And there is different approach to different uh, places that people are coming. And someone like um, Pekarski, Leonid, which was a quite a known curator and a critic in Moscow, coming to Israel and he's worth nothing. And he has first job was to dig graves, and then for so many years he was uh, a god in a parking place. But you cannot, uh, I don't know how to say it, you cannot win um, by not letting someone work, he started to write and became a really uh, amazing writer, sitting in this small place, parking place, awful, and just writing these amazing stories in Russian. And they were all, after a while, they were all published in art. Art is the most, um, more, the, I don't know how to say it, it's an it's, it's important um, newspaper in Israel and every Friday there is uh, writings there, literature. And he became very known for his writings. And when I started the project, the figure of the God increased more and more. He was the obstacle for me. The God sitting in front of the building, uh, uh, the asylum, the Surrey County Asylum, the ninth century, there was a guard there, must be. Will he let us come in or not? So the whole project became suddenly tactics against this guard. So I was also involved in strategies and tactics, sort of infiltrators, how and everything. And he grew and he grew and he became not only the bad guy. He also became someone that, when he, you can see it in the portrait, if he sees someone, uh, a black woman, but she looks a little bit like Vermeer painting, my God, he loves art. Loves art. So he will let her come in because she reminds him of the girl with the earring. So I have, if we have time, I have explanation about every tactic and every person have a different uh, tactics, but I did it with the people themselves. I showed them the book that Professor Gaiman edited. I showed them how the people that Dr. Diamond used to take the photographs. And together, we were thinking of a tactics of how to get to the 19th century. Like all the men, I don't know why, all the men in, uh, in Gilman, in uh, Gilman book in, uh, by Dr. Diamond, most of them are in profile. So men I took in profile. You know why? Because the God, he knows men in profile, so he lets in my people uh, in profile. 
strange. <laughs> Um, and so, when I had to take, a, I decided that, look, when you start a project like that and you, you're in, and, and you want to go to another era, you start to think also about violence. What it means to go to another era? Will I use violence or not? You cannot make community and you cannot do steps without thinking if you want to use violence or not. So I thought that I may have my gods too. And he was the first one to come into my mind because he understands in art, he's a creator, but he's also a god and I want to be responsible. If I want to replace the god in the 19th century, I want to replace it with someone that has experience of guarding. So this was Pekarsky. And no, Aldin Musa, it's a big story. He, his best friend, he lives now in Canada. And one night I got, uh, from a woman I don't know, I got uh, a message in Messenger and she said, I have these two photographs by uh, someone from Drafur and uh, I want you to ask you what you think about these photographs. I, I saw these two photographs, I never said it before and I wrote to her. If he has more photographs like that, he's going to have an exhibition in Tel Aviv. They were amazing photographs. Why? Because he decided that although he is in kind of a jail, detention, he's not going to take one picture inside the jail. This was his resistance. He said that if he's going to take photographs inside the detention, there will be more detentions. It's the opposites of what we are uh, we used to think, that we want to give memory to places that in order to have, but he had the opposites. He was not willing to, to be what uh, the, uh, people expecting from him. So he took only places outside the detention, but they had something very special in them. So I went to the detention, I went to South uh, Israel and I met him He's my Mandela, what can I say? He changed my life. I'm not the same since I met him. He's different the way he talk about suffering. When he was nine years old in uh, Sudan, uh, they told all the kids to bring Agora, that's the name, to bring one Agora for the war uh, in Sudan. He came to his father and said, look, dad. Um, we were supposed to give money, one agora, but we are not giving one agora. His father said, why? He said, because I'm not giving money for war. And he remember his father looked at him when he was nine, he told him, Nuri, you won't be able to live in Sudan. And when he was uh, 19, he had to run away, and he came to Israel. Now a person like that, like Nur al-Din Musa, is, 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 he knows six languages, he's so clever. He knows so much about identity, about issues of being um, uh, Christians, Arabic, Muslim, I mean, and they, they're sending him into a jail. <laughs> Instead of taking all this community of people, 30, 40,000 uh, people, and let them, Nur al-Din Musa, when he came to Israel, they asked him, uh, he said, I don't want to live here, I just want, uh, for a short time, I want a shelter. Um, pe but people are afraid, all of us, people are afraid from other people coming, for other people taking your property, whatever. But in Israel, compared to what the Jewish people uh, passed, um, I was hoping they'll treat better people that had... Um, uh, crisis in their lives, that they had to leave their places. Uh, what I like in uh, Nur al-Din, that um, I took him to many universities to lecture. He knows fluently Hebrew. Fluently Hebrew. Hebrew is not an easy language. And I took him, uh, and he already had three solo exhibitions with me there. And he's my God here, he's my angel.
Noraldine Musa is actually featured twice in the exhibition upstairs. He's in the light, the small light box as a guard, and he's also one of the large photographs, um, one of the ten large photographs on the wall. It's amazing. Uh, Noraldine is one photograph him is with the dress, and there is also a movie when I I. I we, we're studying together of how it's amazing his knowledge to be in the dress and to disappear there so the guard will let him in. He knows to do it. He knows how to make himself small, make himself don't exist. But when you see him as a guard, you see someone different completely. And that's why he's got two of his photographs there. Mm -hmm. oh. Difficult seven years. She's asking, uh, how were you able to live in the past and the present while doing this project? Um, you never know as an artist how deep to go. <laughs> but when I encountered this photograph, I, I became quite ill for a while. Uh, it was a diff really a difficult uh, meeting, and then with the arts and whatever, uh, the first, the first, <laughs> everything is falling. But that's me. <laughs> whatever you don't know, with, with in the museum, who owns it? It's mine. <laughs> um, so for me, it wasn't new to be in the past and to be in the future, or whatever. Um, I'm used to. To be, in, it's it's not about uh, uh, anything uh, superstitious. It's not about anything like that. It's uh, first of all when you deal with photography, you deal a lot with the past, and um, but also one um, person that doesn't believe so much in you know the time that was di dictated for us. So the point is that also you discover that postures, gestures, mean people, uh, uh, jails, institutes, the same. The same. I, I won't say women have better life now in many places, but many people still, I mean, I was so surprised in San Servolo, Italy, 30 years later than uh, in England. So it means start of humanity. Railways, uh, Victoria, the Queen, uh, uh, photography. But the women in Italy, in San Servolo, they already had shocks, electronic shocks. There was already beautiful things to, uh, to, to put on their hand. Everything was worse than in England. In the, and photography just helped to do that. And I discovered that a photographer is not known, and I'm working on his work now. And I don't know why, but most of his um, photographs of the women, and there's thousands there, women are held in their heads in a very... Uh, and you know what happened in the end? I was... The, my God was... I was so afraid of my God, and then I discovered, and this was really difficult for me, that there is in San Servola there was a god woman and she was holding most of the of the women and it's because I enlarged one photograph and I saw she has like 20, 30 keys here. And that's how I discovered so that was um, so the past is not so different, I mean, to, to someone like Noraldin. And uh, yeah, it's hard. But it's also, you know, it's fascinating. I had such seven good years and working with other people and working with Sarah and discussing things and with the people and having the book and whatever. It's, um, I'm so happy about the book. I must say that all of the ones that helped me to have the book and the writers and also the donations I had, it's, uh, it's amazing because when you don't have a book and you have uh, 
kind of this exhibition and it's good to have a book. It's a good platform. <laughs> yeah. Other other questions? I would love Sender to say something. Are you ready? Or not? It's no, it's not? You're so shy. No. <laughs> I met uh, I met Sender in Tel Aviv. I didn't know he was there. I entered a place and I saw him and was uh, uh, something fascinating in, in this book is that the photographs of Dodo Diamond were lost. What was known is uh, uh, drawings, lithographs, um, that um, were done from the photographs. One of the key things uh, for me in my research is when you want to evaluate people, or when you, you, when you build uh, tests, and when you want to x-ray people, photographs are not good for that. Why? Because the person who is being photographed is influencing the photograph. He's got his gaze, he's got his mouth, he can decide not to laugh, he can decide whatever. He's got an input there. But when you make a drawing of something, you can do whatever you want to. So, some, uh, what's his name? Doctor, uh, the one who took the photo, the engravings. No, yeah, but the one who took the engravings and went to lecture. John Colony, he took uh, the photographs of uh, Dr. Diamond and he made drawings out of them. So you see, in the f and, and what happened at uh, Sandra Gilman found original photographs. So you see a woman, she looks strong. She's looking at the eyes of the photographer. And then you see the drawing. In the drawing, they made her look down. They put under her hands Bibles. They changed the whole photograph, and then down below it's written religion melancholy. So that was fascinating in the book. And I have to say something. The, the, the whole idea of the space and, the, and with the videos and with the sound and everything is about the fact that you might want to hospitalize me, because I'm saying plate 34 is me. But what I'm saying is that I know, I know it can't be me because it was photographed 150 years ago. But when I look at the photograph, I know it's me. And this is the exhibition about. And this is where art and photography, whatever, can change things. And I also have the possibility of hearing, which is to explain. You will be in residence for maybe another eight days. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about what people could expect if they come back to the museum mm -hmm. uh, over the next uh, eight days, how they might encounter you and what that might be like? Mm -hmm. First, I'm here and ready I mean, to, to make tours and whatever with, with people. I think one of the problems, if you take this museum, uh, all, all is, all, you need a week here. <laughs> <laughs> To really see the exhibition, to really see and hear the talks I have with other people and the videos and whatever, you need a day. Um, but an exhibition is also a feeling. You have the feel and you gain something and you see one or two films and it's also built on that. I'll be here as much as I'm, I can. And relating to, to have the dress on, I did it for three months in Italia. Uh, it was the opposite dress. Uh, I mean, it's a dress that you look so bad, it's, it fits everyone. Everyone. Women, men, tall people, whatever. It fits everyone because that's the way dresses were, were planned to be in the institutes. 
So I sit in this dress. It's quite strange. There is also, you know, there are also the masks that some people holding in the photographs you'll see. You didn't ask me about the masks. The masks are a good way to enter. For example, the mask of Virginia Woolf. Everyone knows, even my God knows that she's crazy, right? So I have my assistant holding the mask of Virginia, and that's how the God let her come in. So masks are also my way to take artists I like and other people that I cannot take with me, uh, other than not live or too famous. Um, and what was the question? Uh, the, and the, yeah, I'll try and be with the dress. For three months in Atelier, it was... Now, I have to see if I can... It's not simple because, first of all, when I sat in Atelier for three months, I asked people to help me to get to the 19th century. That was the whole idea. I slept a lot. I may sleep here. I slept in, the, in Atelier, I slept the whole opening, I remember nothing. Nothing, only from photographs I had. I slept so deep with the dress, quite. Um, so I have to see if, if it, it will work here. <laughs> I'll try. If not, I'll sit like that, be prettier, and talk to people. And you're very welcome. I have a lot of... Um, I have books, I have a, a, a drawers with books and photographs that are not in and developing a kind of... A, I had amazing girl, there is a conversation with her, and her name was Emily, like my daughter. And she looked at the photograph of the book, Play 34, she said, it's you? I said, yes. She said, but she doesn't look like you, you old, she's young, she was part of a twin. So she was very interested in why I said it's me. And then she insisted, it can't be you, it can't be you. And then she said, okay, she said. Do you remember Dr. Diamond, like the photographer when he took your portrait? I never thought about that. It was amazing. She asked, do you remember this moment? I said to her no, and I laughed. But then in the space when I took people and explained them about the exhibition, I say the story about Emily asking that. Emily, young Emily, think that whatever happens to you, you remember. But we know that the hard stuff we don't remember. So I might not remember why Dr. Diamond took my portrait. And many other wonderful conversations I had. Hmm. Soul, or did this just start with your seeing no, one portrait that you went, that was me? No, I think my work from the beginning, uh, you know, they say that there is something in you that all the time you search and so I think. Mm. And also, are you a psychoanalyst? Uh, you okay. So okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's are asking, are you a no. psychoanalyst? I was accepted to uh, uh, institute because I, for so many years, I was a patient lying on the couch. That I did it. I did it also as an infiltrator. I wanted to understand the language. That's why. Okay. <laughs> um, no, so I became. I read a lot, and my works and my performances and my lectures became on famous uh, non. Uh, psychoanalysts like uh, Wilfred Bion and on Freud and on. Uh, uh, You're Jungian? No, I'm not Jungian. Right no, 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 I'm not. Think, I'm not any of them. Okay. <laughs> but um, I did the many works about psychoanalysis and uh, that's the, the, we have a sofa there. The, so the ones who haven't seen. <laughs> um, I think that the sofa with my Mona Lisa. And the therapist is sleeping there. You'll see there is a video of someone sleeping. The therapist is sleeping. And <laughs> Thank you all so much. I hope if you haven't already that you'll head up and take a look at the show. 
um, and then come back again and again. Mm-hmm. <laughs>